Star, Your Brother's Movie. A delightful adventure, not at all what I expected it was going to be. <laughs> Sega! After Sonic proved that video games can be successful, it was only a matter of time before Nintendo wanted a slice of that pixelated pie. Welcome in the Super Mario Brothers movie 2023, the movie that proves that you don't even have to be an actual movie with a deep story, just pretty visuals, and a hippopotamus mouthful of nostalgia, because that's what 95% of this movie was. Super Mario is a modern, high-definition, digital rendition of Where's Waldo, but rather than peering at an overcrowded illustration to spot the elusive character with the striped t-shirt, you'll find your mission being to point out how many references of Super Mario's games were in every frame. Don't play a drinking game with this movie doing that because you will be drunk before it begins. From beginning to end, this film is an auditory time machine, taking you on a ride from the chiptune melodies of the NES era to the orchestral scores of the latest titles. They even had Baby Mario and Baby Luigi in there from Yoshi's Island. But let's kick off with the summary of this story. So right away, you already know what kind of movie this is, and... As much as I'm a Super Mario fan, I found myself really being a bit apprehensive about it, starting off with nostalgia bait, but you know, that's what the majority of this movie is. I've sampled, though, a buffet of modern day movies that resurrect old franchises enough to recognize how they nostalgia bait the hell out of the audience, to know that sometimes they tend to get a little bit lazy, but this is Super Mario we're talking about. Seriously, how can they mess this up? So here we have the formidable Bowser, Nintendo's own Godzilla wannabe, wreaking havoc on the Penguin Kingdom. Remember the penguins from the 64 game? Oh my god, remember throwing the baby off the freaking cliff? I don't know why, but I expected them to at least put that in there. It wasn't in there, or at least not that I could find. I'm sure if I go back and watch it over, which I probably won't, um, you'll find that somewhere in the reference. But anyway, from the get-go, Bowser is painted as this indomitable force, a foe to be reckoned with. And let's be real, Jack Black lends his voice to the role with such... I finally found it, and now no one can... Stop me! Pinoche. It's hard not to be impressed. I mean, maybe that's because I also really like Jack Black. And I like Bowser too, so those two together, oh, chef's kiss. Destroy the Mushroom Kingdom! Daddy, chill. There's an almost sexy quality to his portrayal. Like, but it's Jack Black though, so I mean, that, that goes hand in hand. Not to mention, every single frame of this movie is a visual treat. You can randomly pause at any point in this movie and that's instant wallpaper material right there. Every single frame. Boom, wallpaper. Boom, wallpaper. Wallpaper, wallpaper, wallpaper. I'm telling you, I just kept saying that throughout the entire course, especially Bowser scenes. Oh my god, wallpaper for days. Oh, okay, so then we're translated to Brooklyn, New York. Hey! <laughs> We are then promptly introduced to the Mario Brothers, Luigi, and Mario. We see a commercial for plumbing in which they use their in-game, very stereotypical Italian voices. Are you tired of paying too much for plumbing? Mamma mia! They make a cute little quip at the fact that they went too heavy on the accents, but since it's just for the commercial, it's completely fine. And I think the original guy who does the voice is he even still alive? It sounds like him. Anyway, it sounds like the person who does the voice for the games. Well, anyway, apparently their business is not doing so well. Not only that, but from society standards, they're not really the most impressive. <laughs> I can't tell you how many times in this movie they, or specifically Mario, is made fun of for being short. This, you know, also comes from someone who's supposed to be a good guy as well. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. Oh, look, it's another reference about Four Man Spike from The Wrecking Crew. Oh my god, just, just... Just be prepared to assume that anybody and anything that you see in this movie is a reference to something in the gaming world. And trust me, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. It just gets a tad bit annoying when you realize that they're overusing it to the point where they fill the movie to the brim with these references and nostalgia that there's barely any place left for the story or character development. But like I said, this is Super Mario we're talking about, so there isn't much space for them to mess up this movie. <laughs> I'm telling you, the most interesting parts about this movie, aside from the visual treat and designs of the characters and the world, are the segments like this, where you watch Luigi and Mario, or one of the characters from a side-scroller platform perspective, just moving about their environment. It fits really well, because that's what Mario is about. <laughs> so off they trot, 
our intrepid duo to a seemingly simple gig that devolves into utter bedlam. Apparently, the homeowners don't quite grasp the concept of keeping their pets out of the way of professionals who are trying to fix their home without causing further expensive damage. Needless to say, the ensuing chaos was actually hilarious and I found myself snickering more than once. After the scene of their worksite looks like something from out of a war movie, our dejected Mario Brothers were convinced that they'd never land another job. But lo and behold, they get a shot at redemption when they learn that there's a broken water main. Brooklyn needs a hero, or rather two. Save Brooklyn. <laughs> That's funny. Everyone from Brooklyn knows it can't be saved. Anyway, Mario doesn't give up and they go to fix the problem but end up getting sucked into a pipe. While on their journey being sucked. <laughs> Luigi and Mario are separated and Mario emerges into this beautiful environment filled with mushrooms, i.e. the Mushroom Kingdom, while Luigi unfortunately ends up in a hellscape overrun by Bowser's minions and ghostly Skeletor Koopas. Mario is confused as to where he is and he meets Toadstool, and Toadstool, ever the helpful fungus, offers to lend a hand and whisks him off to meet the princess of the kingdom. Yeah, Princess Peach. Princess Peach is aware that Bowser is on his way to the Mushroom Kingdom to wipe it from the face of the earth, whatever planet they're on. Mario asks her for help and she has him go through an obstacle course, mainly for nostalgia, and then she agrees to have him come along with her and Toadstool joins them too because, just, just because. She also teaches Mario about the power-ups. Peach. Bowser serenades about how much he loves Peach because you can't have a Jack Black movie without Jack Black singing and sounding exactly like Jack Black while he's singing when he's supposed to be sounding like Bowser. Understand. There's a nice bit of torture in here also when Bowser's ripping Luigi's lip pubes off his face. Shut up! Next up on the royal road trip, Peach, Toadstool, and Mario aim to recruit the Kongs. Yes, the very same Donkey Kong, Diddy Kong, and their extended Nintendo 64 family. <laughs> Gotta have a splash of Mario Kart in there as well. Like, okay, not maybe not a splash, like a tsunami throughout the entire movie. Spider! In order to secure the Kongs' help, Mario has to outplay Donkey Kong in their original rivalry, where the primate antagonist famously lobbed barrels at our plucky plumber. Nostalgia for every generation, I guess. <laughs> I never even knew this game was a thing until like semi-recently when I had to do research on something else. Anyway, Mario turns into a cat. <coughs> because remember, nostalgia. Super Mario 3D World, oh my god, all right? <laughs> so then they get an army of the Kongs and they all get their own Mario Kart vehicles. This feels like something that I would dream after playing a bunch of Mario games and then going to sleep after eating like a belly full of cereal. I swear, this is exactly <laughs> how my dreams are. But anyway, moving on, Bowser soon catches up to them and they do a Mario Kart battle. And the entire ensemble of characters is captured except for Mario and Donkey Kong who get swallowed by this underwater eel thing because nostalgia water level ah! Ah! and Toadstool and Princess Peach, the latter by the way, nothing ever happens to and who is perfect in every single way that it makes it hard to believe she's even the same character anyway, they get away and head back home. Now there is nothing to stop Bowser as he arrives at the Mushroom Kingdom where he has a face off with Peach and blackmails her into marrying him. Princess Peach had tricked Bowser and decided that she's not going to marry him and fights him and he almost kills all the other characters. Meanwhile, Mario and Donkey Kong manage to escape their Elish prison so that Mario can rush to his brother's aid. Our mustachioed hero attempts a Superman move to halt Bullet Bob from decimating the Mushroom Kingdom, but ends up inadvertently causing a rift between his world and Bowser's and all the other Mushroom people. This results in Bowser's role getting sucked into his. Mario gets the crap beat out of him right in the middle of Brooklyn until Peach and Donkey Kong save him. And then later, cowardly Luigi becomes brave and shields his brother, and they both get the star that Bowser had after Peach gives it to them, and then they beat Bowser's ass in a fine throwdown. They save Brooklyn, and now they have a lot of business, but they sleep in the Mushroom Kingdom world. <laughs> I mean, I guess if you had a choice between sleeping near the sidewalks of Brooklyn and sleeping in a perfectly sweet world where mushroom people sing to you at night and shit, you'd, you'd choose the latter, because you know what? They live in like the downtown bad area probably in Brooklyn. Who knows? Anyway, that was a general summary. Okay, feel free to leave. <laughs> Especially if you're triggered easily, I know. So from here on out, I'm gonna be picking apart the movie because I've got to be honest, while it was cute and it was definitely a visual spectacle, and I agree, it definitely is a wonderful adventure, especially for kids or family. As a movie, a standalone movie, 
It wasn't that great. It wasn't a bad movie, but it wasn't particularly a great one either. To be honest, the Sonic movie did it better. Sorry, sorry. I'm not exactly a Sonic fan. I'm a Mario fan, but the Sonic movie is loads better in terms of storyline, character development, and just general entertainment in my opinion. The Sonic movie is something that can be enjoyed by adults and children, and it would keep me wanting to come back and watch it. The Mario movie was cute, but I do not want to come back and watch it anytime soon, or at all for that matter. <laughs> Mario and Luigi were adorable and Bowser was sexy and everything was very pretty and I guess the only reason I might rewatch this movie would be to screenshot specific scenes for wallpapers. Now let's get into the meat of the commentary for the Super Mario Brothers adventure. The fuck now, bitch? to understand going into this movie is clearly that um, you might not be the target audience. This movie feels as though it can be enjoyed from ages 3 to 8. People ages 3 to 8. And that's not saying that adults can't enjoy it either, but there is a specific way certain movies are set up and specific tones about movies that tell you what age group they're geared towards. It's definitely something the parents are not going to pull their hair out over, but it might put you to sleep if you're expecting a story that is a little bit more engaging than just Look, remember all these things that you remember seeing in other video games your parents used to play with you as kids. If it doesn't take much to entertain you and you have that wonderful, much coveted super ability to turn your brain off, you will be completely happy with this movie. Attack! Relying on contemporary tunes is a crutch that modern films frequently lean on to reel in a broader demographic. It's a nod to the audience that might not be the target of the specific type of entertainment as a way to say, hey, remember this song? Isn't it cool? Oh, wow. Yeah, it's my jam. I guess I'm going to wake up for the next two seconds to listen to it, you know? Also, anytime seeing Bowser on screen was just a delight for me because, <laughs> wow. Or should I say bow wow? Okay, that was so freaking bad. I'm so sorry. But you know... That's the kind of humor that's completely in line with this movie. Ah! Oh, we're the Mario Brothers and Plummins again. And the Luigi. Are you tired of a pain? There you go, annoying audience who was complaining about Mario not using his voice. Might as well make up your headcanon to include the games as being Mario's merchandise and his voice being a caricature of himself. Perfect. Yahoo! I find it quite amusing how in today's cinematic landscape, everyone is quick to take offense and eager to revamp old franchises to suit contemporary sensitivities, yet when it comes to characters of a paler hue, it appears that these concerns conveniently fade into the background, they just cease to exist. You know, how impeccably consistent, isn't it? <laughs> Honestly, I was definitely into the scene with Cujo, the Golden Retriever over here, especially since Golden Retrievers are usually seen as nice and gentle. Luigi did break his bone, and the dog is somehow acting as though he wouldn't have done exactly the same thing or worse with his jaws. But I get it though, you don't come into someone's home and break their stuff. Call it payback for all the slippers that you probably ripped up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> please school me if I'm incorrect. After moving from my country, I spent some of my childhood in Brooklyn, and not once did I ever hear anyone greet anyone like this. Like, there was that little time, people from Brooklyn, you might know, remember when people were in the hallway and school like, yeah, and they would do that stupid freaking weird ass wilderness call. You'd hear that a lot, but never at any point did I ever hear, hey whatever the hell these people just did. The first time I've ever heard someone utilize this greeting was when watching It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where I apparently learned that it was a Philadelphia thing, even though all my time spending time in Philadelphia never heard anyone do that either. Like I said, I might be wrong. Who knows, it might be a nod to Always Sunny in Philadelphia since Charlie Day is playing Luigi. Awesome, that's great. All right, here we go. What's up, bitches? I might be wrong, but um. <laughs> well, I thought it was incredible. Also, I know that pasta is like a very common food group of Italians, but for some reason it just felt very on the nose, especially since Chris Pratt is voicing Mario. 
who's an Italian and he does not sound like one. He does not sound like a Brooklyn Italian. He tries at times. He seems to get it down for certain words. But for me, having grown up around Brooklyn Italians, especially considered that I'm married to one, you can hear from the majority of the movie that it feels forced as hell. And Mario's character only sounds the most natural when Chris kind of slides back into his normal way of speaking. You know, I understand the comments. Uh, Charlie Day, who's playing Luigi, actually it comes from an Italian heritage. Oh, he does. Yeah, so that's our that's our. <laughs> and that's awesome. Yeah. How much are you gonna have them like lean into the like? It's me, it's Mario. Like lean into the Italianness. It's you know we we cover it in the movie, um, so you'll see that we definitely nod to that, but that's not the tenor of the performance throughout the film. So there's a bit of Italian niche, but it's not gonna. No. You don't think the white people are gonna go? Oh, cancel Mario? You know I what I mean? Think so. What were you thinking with that commercial? What? It's supposed to be funny. It's a We've never been apart this long. Okay. Okay. That was amazing. Wait. How, how am I supposed to do that? Then what my dad thinks I'm a joke too. Yeah. Told you. See? As long as we're together, everything is gonna be okay. <laughs> Mario, why do you look like a bear? What is this? It's a me. A Mario. That's not the voice. You'll have to wait to hear the voice. So that was a fucking lie. What the fuck is this? What, is this your first year writing movies? I'm married to that and I hear it every single day and especially comes out when he's mad. That is what a Brooklyn Italian accent sounds like for someone who grew up in Brooklyn around a Brooklyn Italian family. This... I am so glad we spent our life savings on this commercial. That's what Chris is doing does not sound like that at all. It's a me. A Mario. Our whole lives, everyone's telling us we can't do this, we can't do that. Sick and tired of feeling so small. Welcome to being part of an Italian family. One thing I will add though, it is pretty cool that they added that little bit of detail in there that I don't see being present in any other of the Mario franchises. But Mario has a family outside of just his brother. We don't think about that because it's just him. But it's so interesting to see him part of a family. Even though I'm confused as to what age he and his brother are supposed to be. The subtle inclusion of the pipe level soundtrack from the SNES Mario game <laughs> is indeed a delightful touch. It's not overpowering, and in this scene, it harmonizes perfectly with the enigma of the old, abandoned, cut off section of the sewer. The big green pipe is obviously where the magic is going to begin. As Luigi is sucked into the pipe, Mario, of course, needs to go find Luigi. I know, right? Nudge, nudge. Let's see how many Mario games we can cram in. Seriously, if it weren't for my mom introducing me to the SNES games on her old system, I wouldn't have known about these. Like one of her games was Finding Mario and I had to go through like different areas like France or Italy, at least I think so. And I'm mad because I never beat that game and I never found him. <laughs> and the game was so freaking complicated, at least for me it felt like that. It was just going through the towns and then going through pipes and it was just, I don't know. I have to go back and revisit that game, but she, she has all the games, she still has a system. Anyway. We're yeeted right into the adventure of Super Mario Brothers, the movie that looks like one big cinematic cutscene of all the games combined rather than a movie. A little bit, yeah. Luigi and Mario are split up and Luigi naturally has to go to the dark world because we need to have that Luigi's Mansion reference. It's one of the few Mario games I've never played. Do not! That's a little mushroom man. A little mushroom man talking to me. Am I supposed to believe he's afraid? For some reason, the only performance in this entire movie that gets on my nerves is the main main character, Chris Pratt's Mario. It feels like he's trying too hard or this is completely out of his element, which makes me wonder why they cast him for this role apart from his name recognition. If the target audience is kids, why does it matter if he voices Mario? Most of the little tiny titty gobblers are not really going to know who he is or care. Anyway, it's supposed to be funny that he landed here because he hates mushrooms, even though I don't know why somebody who would hate eating mushrooms would hate seeing them in the wild because nobody's forcing you to eat them, but then I guess there's a play on that joke later. That I guess it's kind of a joke, but no. Anyway. Whoa! One of the best segments of this movie is when Luigi finds himself in this horrorscape. <laughs> it actually looks as though he's being chased and running for his freaking life. I actually believe in that moment that he's in danger and it makes my butt clench. Like what? Why can't they do every other movie like this? Take notes, Jurassic Park, the newer movies, and the newer Land Before Times. You can make the character look like they're legitimately in danger without having a monster just stand there for a whole 10 seconds waiting for the main characters to remember they should be running away before the monster takes a chomp into thin air where they just were. Good thing 
there's a breeze in here. Wait. So long! <laughs> 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 The action sequences are so well done in this movie, and you can excuse Old Bones for moving slower when he reanimates because he just put his body back together. Uh, never mind. They all start moving slowly before only moving as fast as the zombies from Train to Busan when Luigi starts running away from them, so they didn't fuck up there, sorry. I also love Luigi's screams in this. They sound genuine and like he's really scared. Luigi's voice acting was done so much better than Mario's. Like, there's a night and day difference. <laughs> after we get another side-scrolling, nostalgic, platform view of Mario trying to figure out which pipe to go up after Toad leaves him hanging there, we are brought to the Princess Peach's castle. Which brings me to the most insufferable part of the movie. I honestly can't say that I'm surprised by what happens next and for what happens in the majority of this movie because the very same thing that often permeates modern day cinema has also affected what should have been an innocent and nostalgic representation of a video game entity. Interestingly, the Sonic the Hedgehog movie managed to avoid this pitfall, yet for some inexplicable reason, Super Mario's movie fell victim to it. Why? Oh my god, it's Super Mario! <laughs> Super Mario, bro! Hey, Super Mario! Oh my god, man! Super Mario! Really? Even though whoever is voicing Princess Peach is doing a great job with emoting her character, her voice itself is a horrible match for Peach's character. Together, we'll annihilate that monster! Do you like this? Peach seems very gruff in this, and what was very memorable to me as a little girl seeing Princess Peach and playing the Super Mario's game where you could use her as a character and her parachuting dress ability was how feminine and elegant she was while also being a badass. Peach is a ruler who rules! Peach is power! Peach is grace! She's no stranger to first place! Here, at times, it feels often like that femininity is just gone. Anyway, Peach says she's gonna convince the Kongs, and being the princess of the Toadstool, she goes completely alone with nobody by her side. I don't know how they're running things here, but I would think at least she'd have a few people by her side, but she's a badass all by herself. She needs no mushroom man. She sees Mario running towards her and her eyes go wide and there's a slowdown and a glowing backdrop to make the audience feel as though she's in love or something of the sort, but that's quickly cast aside. And it's supposed to be funny, don't you know? Because she has to girl boss him real quick and slam him to the ground like a sack of wet dog shit in a Christmas colostomy bag. Peach always goes far, cause she's the superstar in all of us. Plus, Peach is in it to win it. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is even that? You are a human, right? It's just you're so small. Hey. And you look like plastic. This isn't the first or last time someone makes a joke about the main character's height. I mean, you're surrounded by toadstools that are much smaller than he is, and I get that he's a human, even though I don't know how she would know that, being that she's the only human in this world and she claims that she came here from when she was a baby. Why is this a constant joke, though, being run into the ground about Mario's height? We get it. He's a man, and he's short. Ha ha ha. This is the portion where things just take a turn for me. Princess Peach is already introduced as a very unlikable character. She's very full of herself. She's unrelatable because she's perfect in every way, has no struggles, has no flaws, and needs no assistance. Because, remember guys, Mario was always the one that had to save her from Bowser in the games. But we can't have that in modern years because apparently that's the worst thing ever for a woman to be in trouble and a man needing to save her from a monster. Cause she's the superstar! After all, this is fantasy and escapism and in the real world that's what tends to happen. Men usually have to defend us women from physical attacks but that would hit too close to home, you know? that would. The insecurity is just too rough with that, knowing how freaking fragile we are. Oh my god. So for the majority of the movie, not only do we have Mario being looked down upon by everyone around him, but also by the person who we're supposed to look up to? Well, take me with you. This guy's a lunatic, a psycho. He will eat you for breakfast. He won't even notice it, probably, because you're very, very small. <laughs> you see what I mean? Have they ever considered that there are dwarf children out there watching this? What if someone has a congenital defect and they literally cannot grow taller than what they are and they're a kid dealing with that everyday reality and, okay, 
reality is reality and, and I get that they have to form tough skin but what definitely is not in good taste is to have one of their characters they're supposed to look up to who's also making fun of something they struggle with every day if it were like okay if it was a fat little girl character would we be okay with Pete saying this guy's a psycho a lunatic he will eat you for breakfast because there's certainly a lot of you to go around and he would definitely target you because you're very very fat well there's more of an excuse for that because more often than not people can choose what weight they are based on the choices they make you cannot choose your height that we didn't have to do the leg lengthening um because that would mean being in a wheelchair for like two years of my life this this is the kind of tastelessness that is apparently supposed to be funny is she supposed to be the hero or the villain? It actually would have made sense if there was a twist and she turned out to be the villain. But I'm sure Nintendo didn't want that. But of course, the studios needed to have this in their agreement. She must not be saved by Mario at any point. And if it even remotely looks as though she's being saved by Mario, it's only because it was an accident or because he's trying to save everyone else by default or his brother in addition to her. I swear. Like, I was just wiping my face throughout this. And... I, I really started falling asleep shortly after. I was trying so hard to stay awake. So he stands up to her and says, you're gonna help me find my brother. And then he thinks better of it and he says, please. And instead of being a princess and actually being a hero and saying, yes, I will help you find your brother if you will help me with Bowser, she says, let's see what you're made of. Is that a yes? No, that's a let's see what you're made of. Fucking cunt! <laughs> oh, how stunning and brave. So of course, she does the obstacle course to flaunt her mastery because she's been living here her whole life. And you know, finally there's some explanation as to her cockiness. She's done this over and over again, right? So after Mario toils the entire day to try and get this right, which is actually pretty amazing, she tries to console him, you know, because he has to fail. But let's magnify Princess Peach's insufferable and nefarious nature, shall we? Princess Peach consoles Mario and says that she too had failed many times. And can you guess what happens? Snow, tell me! You almost did? No one gets it right away. How many tries did it take you? Oh, so many. Oh, my goodness, eh? I was just like, yeah, go on. Go on. Go, go on. I was not good at it. Worse than you. You got it right away, didn't you? I got it right away, but I grew up here. Seriously? Fuck this movie. What makes her any different than Mario? We're supposed to believe it's because she grew up here, but she obviously is making a point that she lied. You can hear the implication in her voice. Her entire raison d'etre revolves around asserting her superiority over him solely based on her gender. As if being a girl automatically makes her infinitely superior. Because let's not be coy here. We, we know that's what they're going for. It's incredibly repulsive to the point where it triggers an urge to vomit. You would think that something like this shouldn't make or break a movie. But it's so annoying seeing it because it makes every female character look as though they're a piece of shit. And makes it harder for everyone to relate to us because it reinforces the misguided notion that this is how we perceive ourselves. I don't mind them showing her being a hero and being strong. But literally throughout this entire movie, there is no flaws about her whatsoever, except that she's an insufferable c- Stop! Uh, who's he? He's not important! <laughs> You're good. <laughs> That's so funny. Our main character, let's just emasculate, patronize, and demean him even more. I can't take Princess Peach seriously as a leader because she obviously isn't fit to be one. She feels like a mean girl and is obviously high off the corpse devouring no singeing smell of her own putrid farts. Every time she's on screen, I just want to flicker into oblivion. That sounded wrong. You know what I mean? Like with the finger. You know, shut up. Anyway. <laughs> Nostalgia. Oh my god, Yoshi, I remember. And of course, we have to have another piano segment of Bowser simping for Peach because everybody in this freaking movie, sips for Peach, and if they don't, she emasculates them. <laughs> Bowser is genuinely curious if Preach, Preach, <laughs> Princess Peach 
holds any fondness for this new human companion, i.e. Mario, that she's journeying with. It's rather endearing to witness his insecurities and how he perceives Mario as a genuine threat, which provides at least some insight into their ongoing rivalry or explanation of how they are in the game. In my Land Before Time Mario crossover fanfiction, this aspect of the story was definitely present, but with an even more intricate twist. Without sounding too boastful, I must admit that my version of Peach is far more bearable than the abomination they presented in this movie. Yeah, I can say that honestly, looking back at it. Anyway, honestly, if Peach really wanted to take one for the team and she was really a queen and wanted to protect the kingdom, she would marry Bowser knowing that she had influence over him and utilize his power and defense against other potential enemies while also taming him because he seems to be completely willing to bend over backwards to do anything for her if she just says she loves him. Yes, twould be a lie, but you know, so is the life of being a monarch. But we can't have that because, you know, misogyna and patriarchy and whatnot. I mean, I totally would, but that's just me. Anyway, the entire movie we get Peach showing off to Mario about how special and cool she is, but I thought this movie was called Super Mario Brothers, not freaking Super Peach, but that's exactly what it's feeling like. If you couldn't guess already, I despise Peach. Luigi is brought to Bowser and he's tortured a little bit. I swear Luigi is the more relatable out of the two. His scenes feel infinitely more realistic than the ones with Mario in it. Also, when Bowser gets mad, <laughs> damn. You know, you know what I mean? Do you know him? No. Do you know him? Ah! Ah! Oh my god, Daddy, stop! Stop, baby! Ah! That whole segment with his mustache being ripped off his freaking face, I can see that awakening some very, like, sociopathic serial killer vibes in some people who get off on seeing people in pain, because the way they just did that whole thing, it would just, even me, like, not, not saying I... Feel like I could understand, empathize. I don't even know why I'm bothering. Like, <laughs> it's just gonna come out wrong no matter how I say it. This guy's out of his fucking mind! We get a cute segment of the little blue star creature thing from Super Mario Galaxy who is incredibly dispiriting, and it's only funny because it touches on the depressed state of many adults' mindset. <laughs> We see a Take On Me segment with one of the Donkey Kongs driving Peach, Toadstool, and Mario through a Mario Kart track because the nostalgia. And this part is actually fun. I, I don't really know why Princess Peach is here though. Like I get why they said she's here, but it's just super annoying because even when everybody falls or everybody almost falls out of the car, she has to hold them. She lands perfectly. The fact that she's so perfect and everything makes her character super annoying and super obvious. And it's because it detracts away from the other characters, the one who this is supposed to be about. It makes me resent her even more than I already did. And she gets worse. <laughs> Now, while Princess Peach can't fight Donkey Kong for some reason, you would think that Mario would beat this fight on his own because she doesn't interfere. Except, she must have some way of helping Mario or interfering, and so she's the one who points out that he can use a power-up box to beat Donkey Kong, like he, he wasn't gonna see it anyway, it being right in front of his freaking face. <laughs> Because Mario is unable to do anything of any heroic standard in his own freaking movie. <sighs> so we get, he gets the cat power thing and he beats Donkey Kong. <laughs> Princess Peach starts acting really nice to Mario and acts like she likes him, which honestly goes nowhere in this movie because just because they just found it necessary to tease a potential romantic connection that just never materializes. When she's nice to him though, it feels very forced and there's obviously no chemistry there between the characters whatsoever. That is how you princess! <sighs> I swear to goodness, I will never watch this movie again. Like, all the visual nostalgic points are beautiful, but that is all this movie is. Nostalgia eye candy for us Mario fans. I recognize most of the references because I played most of the games, but that's basically what this main experience was. Princess Peach definitely helps to kill even that immersion. No! No, Mario! You're as fake as those stupid eyebrows. Also, Princess Peach was in the lead, so why didn't the blue shell hit her vehicle? So Princess tells Toadstool after she sees that everybody's been captured by Bowser, that she has to go home, that they both have to go home, and they just leave everybody there. With how badass she is, you would think that she could fight Bowser on her own because she did say earlier that she was going to stop him. So why didn't she stop him since she clearly had a chance to do so? But instead, 
She runs her little bitch ass home because she's all talk. But you're in luck. I'm on my way to stop him. So they're all the fucking lie. Seriously, this idiot didn't even have to fight him. All she would have had to do was feel him up a little bit and trick him into thinking that she was in love with him to get him to do whatever she wanted. But she's not that smart, I guess. He went so far as to acquire a star for her. How can she call herself a leader when she can't even read people? The other kingdoms don't appear to respect her. And why would they? We need thoughts, too. Anywho, Mario saves Donkey Kong, or after Donkey Kong kind of saves Mario. Anyway, I, I don't even know. And honestly, I would have been so happy if they had just left Peach out of the equation. Yes, I, I absolutely cannot stand the character in this specific portrayal. And if they had just left her at the Mushroom Kingdom, the movie would have been like 10 times better. Showing her being a badass and fighting to protect her people, but let Mario be the one to go on the journey and handle other things where he would inevitably meet DK and they would become friends and they would save each other, that would have been great because Mario is the one, and since she's so fucking perfect and already went through her whole character arc, Mario is the one that needs redemption. Mario is the one that needs to build his character. Why are you fucking there? Yeah. Nevertheless, it would have been truly captivating to witness a genuine bond develop between Mario and DK. With their shared experience of feeling overshadowed and undervalued by their dads, they could have found common ground and formed a deep connection. Exploring this aspect of their lives could have added some intriguing layer to their relationship and provided an opportunity for personal growth and character development and support. Instead, we have Princess Bitch shoehorning herself into every scene of this movie so that the main characters are actually secondary. We lost the army and Mario's gone. <laughs> Why are they all surprised? Earlier they asked who he was and she said straight to their faces that he was not important. Who's he? <laughs> He's not important! And Mario's gone. <gasps> Why should they even care that Mario is gone when they don't even know who the hell he is? Nobody else knows his freaking name. The princess said that this person was not important or did the writers forget that they wrote that scene early on, you know, to make a stupid ass joke that wasn't even funny. <laughs> wow. Anyway, Bowser comes and he shows Peach what will happen if she doesn't marry him. What did she think was going to happen when she said no? Honestly, the both of them would make a really great couple because they're both really horrible people. And it's probably why he likes her so much. Suck my mushroom! Donkey Kong and Mario find a very convenient way to escape the eel, but it's not about them because Princess Peach is gonna save herself. So with the help of Toadstool, Princess Peach gets the frosty flower and shows Bowser who's boss. She turns into Elsa from Frozen and traps Bowser in ice. Because after all he's done, how is she ever gonna let it go? I fucking this! Let's go for we get a visually stunning, nostalgia spectacle of Mario and Donkey Kong using their power-ups to plow through a bunch of minions, and these are the best parts of the movie because it's not like there's much other substance there. It's like action movies where the story is probably just an afterthought and what you really came here for is the action. And then we get the raccoon suit and the Super Mario's Brother 3 music because remember, nostalgia! Mario saves his brother just in time. Bowser gets mad and because Ice can't hold him down and sees Princess Peach and Mario happy to see each other, but like in a non-romantic way because, you know, we can't have that. Romance between a human man and woman are forbidden in this realm. Bowser gets really jealous and launches Bullet Bob or, or Bill or whatever his name is. Mario recreates Superman scene and then smacks the bullet thing in its eye with his fluffy tail. The moment it stops and turns on him, I was like, oh shit. When my dad was diagnosed with cancer. Mario tricks it into going into the pipe where he came from, and that's when he opens a direct rift between the, the world, his world, and that of the other video game characters. He does this accidentally, and now browsers in Brooklyn, and this movie does kind of play out like the old live action movie. I did that, a review on that. That, that movie was that movie was a mess. But that had, funny enough, more character development, growth, and relatability than this movie did. Then again, I mean, I don't know, maybe that's not saying much. Or are you too scared? This is really reminiscent of Spider-Man and the Green Goblin showdown in the old Tobey Maguire Spider-Man movies. And I'm expecting that Super Mario is going to come up with some ingenious way of defeating Bowser and finally learn how to stand on his own. After all, this is the very end of the movie we're expected to see this. Just what I thought.
Holy fish fuck. Can we get a moment? Just one moment where the freaking male character gets to freaking stand on his own two freaking legs? Oh, oh my days. Are they just shoving her in there along with Donkey Kong so we don't forget that they're there? Okay, you showed them for a significant portion of the movie. Yay! We remember, okay? We remember they exist. Stop! <laughs> oh my god, Jesus in a freaking ice cream truck. Mario comes out and tells Bowser to leave Donkey Kong alone, but we can't forget that Peach is there and she's a boss-ass bitch, so we have to have her help Mario in some way, shape, or form, even when this is supposed to be a scene in which Mario helps himself. Even in this moment when he's supposed to stand up and have a redeeming moment, she has to be a boss bitch and easily kick off the guards holding her like they're nothing so she can help Mario, because, you know, can't Peach gotta be there, Wow. I don't know why. I feel like I'm watching a dumb movie Monday. I shouldn't be. Like, the rest of the movie's great. It's just, she she needs to just be out of it. I don't know why she's even in there. We get this beautiful scene of Luigi saving his brother, and we get the two brothers beating up Bowser in a beautiful showdown fight. Princess Peach feeds Bowser a small mushroom where they really capture him in a jar because there's no way in hell he's ever gonna get out of there, right? Yeah, we can't foresee that coming. And Luigi, you're so brave. What's wrong, Peach? You're not gonna tell him how small he is, too? Is the joke no longer funny since you've beaten it to death? Oh, my boy! Oh, look! It's other small humans. What, you're not gonna mock them for their size, too? Yeah, probably not, because Brooklyn's not the place to do that. It's kind of funny if you think about it, because Peach, Peach probably is not Italian. And, I don't know, just, just guessing. She seems to be of the North Western Europe variety. Are you trying to say something about freaking Italians, bro? <laughs> get a happy ending but they wake up in mushroom kingdom for some reason whatever then we get a post credit scene of bowser singing about peach and and simping for her regardless because you gotta have that we gotta have him singing because it's funny you know what i mean movie was fun and visually pleasing and entertaining visually everyone did a decent job with their voice acting except for chris pratt I really like Chris Pratt, don't get me wrong, but uh, this was not it. <laughs> it was definitely painfully obvious that he was out of his element, and I understand, like, he did the best he could, but I feel like he just did it because, you know, it was his name, and they wanted him just to say that Chris Pratt was gonna be in this movie. I don't think he was the best cast for this, but anyway, the story was as deep as you'd expect an adult erotic entertainment one to be. Then again, people like me are probably not the target audience. You know, people who were introduced to Mario as kids and grew up playing the games, people whose parents bought them an N64 when they were little, and who then saved up their money to buy every freaking Nintendo console they could find, people who as adults went back and purchased the old Nintendo systems, as well as the old handheld systems to collect them and play the old games, and they never got a chance to, people who love video games but also love to witness our beloved video game heroes spring to life within a narrative rich in substance akin to the caliber of storytelling found in movies like Wreck-It Ralph. Yeah it's not for people like us. It's for people that have children who might have played some of the games and can point out what they remember from playing the games. It's a good time for family but you're aware that you're only going there to please your kids and it's nostalgic to you because you remember certain things and if you've not played a Mario game in a long time, it might make you feel a twinge of pepper dick for them good old days. Other than that, it was pretty shallow for a movie. What? What? <laughs> you can say that? You can say those words in that order and you don't explode? Like the people police don't come down from the sky like, oh, I'm sorry, this person's a demon. I didn't even know. I don't know how, I don't know how we got out. Did they do a good portrayal of the characters? Definitely, except for Peach. <laughs> Does this make me want to go back and play the games? Not really, no. I mean, I play them regardless, but this movie is not like, oh my God, I gotta go back and play that, you know? Since Mario wasn't given much opportunity to shine on his own, I found myself hoping for an expanded role for Luigi. Even though Mario was the movie's protagonist throughout most of its runtime, he was often overshadowed by a character whose name wasn't even in the freaking title. The Mario Brothers. <laughs> They're the main characters, the Super Mario Brothers, and a cast of supporting characters. But one who shall not be named of the side characters made the Super Mario Brothers feel like side characters. 
I anticipate some hostility from viewers due to my criticisms, but I have to be honest, I find I find that especially that por that portion of the movie extremely irritating because there wasn't much going on to save the visuals. I found myself dozing off in the midst of the film and what didn't help was this freaking character. Just, I don't even wanna keep harping on it. But anyway, it is a Mario uh, video game movie that is done decently well. And I'm actually happy that it did okay. I still think the Sonic did it way better though. Sega. <laughs> The movie was there specifically to cater to our nostalgia, specifically for fans of the Mario franchise. It, it really was a delight seeing all those characters in their environments, but if they try to make another Mario movie, I really don't think they can get away with just nostalgia baiting the way they did in this one. After all, they put every single bit of nostalgia that they could in this one, save maybe two references. It's the first Mario movie like this, so they can get away with it, but the second time around, they're gonna have to do something with a little bit more substance because you can only use the same trick so many times. After that, it starts to get old and people have already seen it and then they realize what you're doing. That's my honest take. I hope no one gets personally triggered by this. It's in no way me trying to offend everyone and I just hate the fact that I have to put a disclaimer because I'm expecting people would be intellectual and adult enough to understand that you completely finding no fault in something and me finding some faults in it doesn't equate to me somehow personally attacking you for feeling slightly different than you do about a piece of art that's subjective anyway. Do we understand? Anyway, thanks so much for watching. This has been Altieri. You ask, we answer. Preach.